so hello everyone and welcome to another video of my channel smarter every day and from today we are going to start a new playlist and this is the first video of the playlist and in this video we are going to learn about the digestive system and really learning the digestive system is very interesting and fun so let's start but but before starting don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel now let's start so the points covered in this video are what is digestive system importance of digestion process in providing our body with nutrition introduction to digestion and a sub topic of it is parts of elementary canal and digestive glands and then we will briefly understand what is elementary canal and as you can see this image over here this is the full digestive system so now let's go to the first topic that is what is digestive system so digestive system is a system in which the organs involved in digestion take in food and liquids and break them down into simpler substances that the body can understand and use for energy growth and tissue repair so digestive system is a system in which the organs involved in uh, digestion they take in food and liquids and they break them down into simpler substances that the body can use so body can't use the normal bread that we eat the coca cola and pepsi that we drink so the body has to break them down into simpler substances that the body can understand so the body can take it in and it can use for energy growth and tissue repair now let's go to the second topic that is importance of digestion so digestion very important because your body needs energy from the food and liquids that we eat to properly stay healthy and if digestion system shuts down you may get prone to many diseases so digestion is very important because our body needs energy we play we go to the ground we play sports and also for that we need energy and if we don't get that energy we can't play at all and uh, even we stay healthy if digestion happens and if digestion system it shuts down it stops digesting the food we eat we may get prone to many diseases because yeah digestion also gives immunity it gives nutrients proteins and all to fight diseases and if it only shuts down how will we get rbc wbc the white blood cells and red blood cells how will we get them to fight diseases so we may get prone to many diseases now let's go to the third topic that is the process in providing our body with nutrition okay so the process involved in providing our body with nutrition are first step food is taken into the mouth so we eat the food and then it is broken down and digestion this make it this makes it small enough to pass from through the digestive system into the blood stream or the blood capillaries and then the dissolved nutrients obtained from the food are carried by the blood stream to all the cells of our body so this in this step all the white blood cells and proteins are distributed to all the cells of our body and then the worst the waste material is not absorbed into blood instead it is eliminated it is thrown out from the digestive system through the anus okay so these are the steps in it first is ingestion so we intake it we take it in and then second is digestion so it digests the food and liquid that we take in then it gets absorbed by the blood and the cells of the body and then ingestion we remove the waste material now let's go to the next topic that is digestion in human begins so we introduced here what is elementary canal and digestive gland so okay so now let me introduce to you what is elementary canal and digestive gland before we start with the real process of digestion 
so elementary canal can also be called as the digestive tract so this full you can see this full is the digestive tract or the elementary canal from where the food travels through so here the food travels then the digestive glands these three as you can see to the right are all digestive glands are the organs or glands which secrete digestive juices which help in digestion so in mouth only we know that digestion begins so saliva is secreted over here by the salivary glands then in the liver bile juice is secreted and then pancreas secrete pancreatic juice so as you can see the table over here in elementary canal mouth pharynx esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine and anus is involved in elementary canal so this is the path of the food so we'll not get in more detail if we have not understood many terms then we'll go to the digestive glands uh, so salivary glands that release saliva then liver that secretes bile juice and then pancreas that uh, uh, secrete pancreatic juice now let's go to the next topic now let me now as i introduced uh, what is elementary canal and digestive glands in this slide you can see now let me let us briefly understand the parts of elementary canal and digestive gland so the first part of the elementary canal is mouth so we know mouth, digestion begins in the mouth so it is the opening of the digestive tract through which the food is ingested chewed and mixed with saliva so it is chewed because of the teeth and then it is even mixed with saliva that is secreted by the salivary glands second is pharynx so the buccal cavity now we'll ask what is buccal cavity so the area in the cheeks means after the cheeks is called the buccal cavity so the buccal cavity will then lead to pharynx now we'll ask what is pharynx also so pharynx is a common passage for the two pipes trachea and esophagus okay so will then will lead to pharynx a muscular opening at the back of the mouth it opens into two pipes trachea that is also called as windpipe and esophagus that is also known as food pipe so next we are talking of food so we'll uh, more focus on esophagus trachea will come in respiratory system now next esophagus so it is a straight muscular tube extending from pharynx to the stomach so it only attaches pharynx to stomach and no digestion takes place in esophagus the wall of esophagus is lined with muscles that contract one after the other in a wave like motion known as peristalsis so the muscles that are lined in esophagus they contract one after the other in a wave like motion as you have seen waves when you have gone to a beach so they contract like that and then this peristalsis movement prevents food to move back into the mouth so even if you are like upside down and if you eat anything still the food will go into the stomach and digest so how it should have uh, come to your mouth right back because of the gravity but because of this peristalsis movement it prevents food to move back into the mouth and we shouldn't do that right? don't try don't try to sit upside down and then eat okay don't do it next is stomach sorry i, I forgot to write over here so stomach it is a large j shaped muscular bag like organ the upper end of the stomach is attached to the esophagus and the lower end opens into the small intestine uh, so digestive juice secreted in the stomach is called gastric juice it mixes with food to form a mixture known as chyme so when the food is gets into a liquidy state a paste form uh, it is called chyme so gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid that is even called hcl 
It even contains mucus and enzymes that help in digestion. Next is small intestine. Small intestine is coiled and folded. So you may think small intestine. So as you can see, image small intestine is so small, but it is actually very big, very very big. But it is like full folded. As we crush a paper, so it is full folded into that small space in our body, and it is divided into three parts: duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. So duodenum is this purple color, bluish black color. Jejunum is this uh, purple, which color you call, and then ileum is this red color. Okay. Now let's go to the next. The inner lining of small intestine. So it is continued. It is small intestine only going on. The inner lining of small intestine has many finger-like projections called villi. So our finger, it has like many finger-like projections in the small intestine called villi, and villi help in increasing the surface area of small intestine to allow maximum absorption of digested food molecules. So in the small intestine. absorption takes place so because of the villi the surface area of the small intestine is more it becomes more and it allows maximum absorption of digested food molecules so next large intestine so the undigested food passes through large intestine where some water and salts are absorbed that couldn't get absorbed in small intestine it gets absorbed in large intestine and digestion stops here at large intestine next anus so now at the end of rectum anus is present that is an opening that throws undigested food out of the body and uh, when water or salts are absorbed still some food is left that couldn't get digested that is thrown out of the body so as you can see this this is large intestine so it is full of colon but we have named it different like first the starting point is appendix then is ascending colon so where it starts it is ascending then transverse colon like transfer it matches transfer colon it transfers it to descending colon then rectum and here is somewhere anus that throws out the food so i hope you all like the video only only that's all for this video we'll meet in the next video with more information of digestive digestive system and i hope you like the video so don't forget to like share and subscribe to my video bye guys we'll meet in the next video with more information and digestive system bye